Good morning to everybody. I hope everyone's healthy, safe and sound at home. Uh, welcome to the Selumium 2020 online masterclasses. There is a slide. Um, uh, I'm super happy to welcome everybody to this uh, lovely presentation uh, and full of information. Um, we have prepared some very exciting um, news for you. Um, I hope um, you're as excited as we are for this day. Um, before we kick off um, the presentations and dive deep into the details, um, I would like to take a few minutes or just a few moments uh, to walk you through a few organizational details. Of course, first of all, thanks to our sponsors. Uh, we're happy to have them uh, as our strong supporters um, for this event. Uh, by the way, this is me uh, sending live from Vienna. I'm sitting in my uh, kid's bedroom today uh, to host uh, this lovely masterclass uh, for you. Uh, I'm leading the marketing department and uh, with my lovely team. Uh, all right, let's dive into the agenda. Uh, kicking off uh, is our um, CEO, Michael Kreftner. Uh, in, uh, in a few moments, uh, he will talk you, uh, walk you through um, our latest strategic shifts and moves and uh, then our uh, lovely solution architects and uh, consultants team will take over to dive deep into the details um, fyi um, <clears throat> uh, you can ask questions in the chat uh, our consultants will try to answer uh, the questions um, as fast as possible um, and if we don't have a very fast answer for you we will come back to you by email um, there is a handouts section in the menu uh, There you can always find the agenda so you know what's up next. Um, there will be breaks in between so you always can get uh, your breakfast uh, or your cup of coffee. Um, and of course, uh, while we're at it, you can always go to workrooms.net and request a trial um, for our new product which will officially launch on Monday. Okay, and FYI, also the recordings you will receive uh, next week, most probably on Tuesday, once we've cut everything uh, into into the right uh, sections. Um, let's hop over to our next presenter, which is, of course, our lovely Johanna. Thanks, welcome, and over to you. I'm uh, very excited for the Workrooms Essential now. Thank you, Eugen. Let me just give myself the present the role. Okay, yes, welcome okay. Um, and good morning from my side as well. Um, I'm also working from home, um, looking looking out the sunny weather. I uh, hope you're all well and still healthy. So um, my name is Johanna. I'm with Silum since uh, 2012. And I am now responsible for pre-sales, partner enablement, and customer success. And today I would like to show you how you can boost your collaboration with a smart task management and powerful content creation tools. Um, so basically our workrooms solution. So what's the agenda for this masterclass? Um, in the beginning, I will introduce you to Workrooms, so what it is, uh, who it is for, and especially what it is for. Uh, subsequently, I'll jump into the live demo where I will show you the um, general usage of Workrooms, like uh, creating uh, a Workroom, managing a Workroom. Uh, we'll cover the whole task management and user management. So basically the whole agile co collaboration within a Workroom. After that, I'll also quickly discuss the requirements um, and give a brief outlook on what's next for workrooms. So what is workrooms? Uh, workrooms is both an extension to your content hub and a standalone uh, solution. So it can be used for content creation where uh, internal and external parties need to collaborate. So the collaboration takes place within one virtual uh, workspace. Uh, Workroom supports the, as already mentioned, the HL collaboration. So anything from ideation to creation, from approval to pub publication. So for example, if you need to select photos from a photo shooting or wanna create two pages 
or as Michael already mentioned, um, contracts. So that can all be covered um, within a workroom. Furthermore, you are also able to accelerate your processes um, within a flexible task board. Um, you will see that in a bit during the live demo, how that looks like. And also responsibilities can be improved um, and can be made more visible um, through specific assignments of tasks and specific task lists. So um, basically Workroom is a one-stop shop where people, projects and um, files come together in one place. And typical use cases are catalog creation, brochure creation, uh, the already mentioned um, photo selection process, campaign planning, HR processes, and many, many, many more. Um, to quickly sum up, the three key functionalities of Workrooms are the uh, uncomplicated collaboration of internal and external users within one system, the uh, extensive management of tasks and the clear responsibilities of tasks and task lists. And last but not least, the simple and transparent file management within the same system. So let's jump right into the live demo. Okay, so I, I've already logged in with my user. Um, that's actually what you see once you log in. Uh, that's the cockpit. So you get an overview um, of all the workrooms that you are a part of. Um, the gray ones here, they are already finished. So I could reopen them or delete them if I don't need them anymore. Uh, this one is an active task board. So we are still working on that. As you can see here, we have um, the task board and this is a flow board. So they all are workrooms, but they differentiate between flow board and task board. So a flow board is, is also like a task list, but there are strict rules behind that whole process. So you can define what tasks can be moved in what list and in what direction. Um, so you could cover all your, your strict processes with a flowboard, for example. I will not go further into detail um, about that because uh, Christoph will cover that topic later on. A task board, on the other hand, um, is more HL. So it's still a task list, um, well, a task board with, with many lists, but you can there are no rules in the background. So you can move the tasks um, between the lists back and forth um, wherever you like. So that's that's the pretty HL um, process here. Um, on the left side, you can see other Silom services, for example, the Content Hub that you can jump into. On your user avatar, you can change the language. You can uh, go to the Silom Cloud account, log out. And on the question mark, you can open the help portal um, and view the terms, conditions, privacy policy, and so on. On the top here, um, that's pretty interesting. We have a quick search. So you could um, just insert a term. I know that I have tasks with invoicing um, and I wanted to search this term within everything. So you can choose between, do you want to search the term only for workrooms? So workrooms names, tasks, or files and folders. I was searching um, for overall and I can already see, okay, I have four tasks with the term in the name. I can see that this task is within the TNT task board. I can see within what organization the task is, when it was last changed, in what list the task is, and its due date. And let's try a different one, um, TNT. I can see, okay, this term is within a workroom name. I can also see the organization and the last changes. If I click on it, I will jump right into the workroom. 
then um, because I, I don't really want to open all the different workrooms that I'm part of to just to see what tasks I've been assigned to. We have this my task area in the cockpit. So here you can view all your tasks that have been assigned to you. That's pretty awesome. I don't have any tasks, nothing to do, ready for the weekend. I will come to uh, back to that later on. So as you can see here, I have this create new workroom button. Um, I can see that because um, within the cloud account, um, in my organization, my user has the permission to create a new workroom. So in the cloud account, all the members and, and permissions are being managed. So if I do not have permission to um, create a workroom, I wouldn't even see the button here. So I want to create a workroom now. And as you can see, the uh, template chooser pops up. So now I'm able to choose between templates that were provided to me or create like a standard task board or a, a standard flow board or create even a new template. So the templates that have been provided to me here I can see, okay, it's a flow board. I can see the name. I can see the, the process, like all the lists. Um, and here within this organization, I'm part of this organization, the CPS Silom. So I can see also this template. I also have my personal templates. I just copied the, the ones above and created two task board templates for myself. As you can see, um, here I have more icons, I have more possibilities. So I could edit this template, I could copy it, move it, or delete the whole template. This is only, um, those icons are only shown because I have the permission to manage templates. That's also a permission that is being managed within the cloud account, within my organization. So for my organization, um, like this one, I have the permission to manage a template. Within the organization Silom, I do not have that permission, so I can't manage the templates. Good. Um, I do not want a team task board or a video production task board. I want to create a new template. I can choose between task board or flow board. And that's how the create mode looks like. So I can type in a name, let's see, I want to create a flyer template and then I can choose if I want the template to be visible only within my personal template so that I create it just for me, for myself, or do I want to provide it to other members of my organization. For now, I just want to keep it to myself and this um, task board should be used for flyer creation for products, features, and events, and so on. Then um, I can actually edit the, the list view. So I have this first list here. I want to call it to do. I want another list with doing because all the tasks should be moved into the doing list once they're in process, um, I want to have approval marketing because marketing should be the one um, person or division that need to approve all the tasks that go through the stages. Um, so they, they, ha they have to finally approve the, the flyer creation. And I want to have a doing list. Now I can also like move each list um, to another space, to another spot. I can change the color. For example, I always want up oh, done. This should be done. Um, done should always be green. Uh, to do can be gray. I want doing to be orange and approval marketing should be pink because that's important. 
I could also set a due date for one list. Um, in that case, I do not want to set that right now. Let's create the template. Okay, maybe I was too, too quick. Let's try again. Sorry about that. Oops. To do. Then again, the doing list, the approval marketing, and the done list. And create and then there it is yes so now i created a new template which is now shown within my personal templates and not within my organization because i did not provide it to other members within my organization so i want to open a workroom with this template so I just click on it now i could also edit this template again. The workroom should be flyer, um, bike summer 2020. Um, and I do not need a description here. <clears throat> I could also change the colors again. Let's make this orange again, this pink and this green and create so now that's what it looks like once you open a workroom. So I have this list view um, with the, the list that I just created. I can I have the workroom name here that I can edit. I can hide and unhide the details. If I if I edit the details here, I, the the edit mode will open again. Then I have also this quick search again, but um, this search only goes for tasks and files and folders. Let's try that. I do have a icon here. So it by, uh, by default, it only searches within this workroom. Um, if I wanna search for any tasks in all the workrooms that I'm part of, I can just um, deselect this icon and I would see all the other tasks with this term in the name again. I don't want to do that right now, so let's just close that. Um, here I also have another search. Um, I will come back to that three functionalities later on. I have this magic button here to see more actions for the workroom, so I could exit the workroom, I could finish the workroom, and I can manage the workroom. If I click on manage the workroom, the edit mode will be opened again and I could add more lists or change the lists and so on. Up here, you can see three tabs. So we are within the tasks tab. Um, we can see the task board. We have also the file tab. So um, as already mentioned, we have like a really simple file management within the workroom, so within the system. I can create folders, um, move folders, delete folders. So the um, context menu always shows further actions that actually make, make sense for the selected objects. So for a folder, I can create a new folder, like a subfolder. I can move the folder, rename it, upload a file or delete the folder at all. Um, on the, the files, I will come back to that later on. So I have another tab here called people. I can invite people to a workroom. I wanna do that right now because I wanna start working on the flyer. So first of all, I need the photographer because he needs to upload the pictures from our photo shooting. I need the designer because he has to create the flyer. And I need Mary Marketing 
because she has to approve the files. So now the three users um, will receive an email notification that they have been invited to collaborate in a workroom and they can just click on, on join and they will be joining or opening the workroom right away. If they do not have a cloud account user yet, they can register first. As you can see here, I am a moderator. So I have more permissions within the workroom than regular members. Um, I can always remove a user here. I can appoint a user as moderator. I actually want Mary Marketing to be a moderator. And that means that Mary could also invite further people, further members for this workroom, which Paul and Drew cannot. And also she has the, the, the finish workroom, manage workroom and invite people actions. So a regular member can only exit a workroom. Good, then let's go back to tasks. Um, I actually wanna create a few tasks right now. Let's see, upload logo. Then I want um, select one image for flyer. And I want, oh yeah, I need of course the, the photos. So please upload photos from shooting. As you can see here, I now have the three tasks in this new list. Um, I can see a preview. I do not see in this case a preview because I did not add any files to the tasks. And here with the hide preview button, I can hide the preview at all. So if I only have tasks without any um, files attached, um, it's just a better overview. Uh, to have just the name of the tasks. Or I can uh, show the preview again, of course. So let's just add the task. Um, yeah, I, I'm in the task um, overview. I have the name of the task. I, I know when it was created, who created it, and in what list it is. I can also select a due date. So I actually want the photos to be uploaded by today and I wanna assign it to our photographer, Paul. I can add a description. Please only upload pre-selected images from Monday. So on Monday we had the photo shooting and we already pre-selected a couple of images. Inform Mary. He uh, also should inform Mary once he uploaded his pictures. So I assigned this task to him. Um, let's go further. So select one image for flyer. Um, Mary should do that because she's actually the responsible person for that. Um, I don't need a due date for that. This is done on my side now and upload logo. Also, Mary should upload a logo. And that should be done by today as well. Good, so I have assigned the three tasks now to specific pers uh, people. And as you can see here, um, I have the due date and the person it was assigned to. That's um, one of the key features that it's um, more transparent. So you see on one uh, look that who is responsible for what task and with those colors, so that is orange, you see that this task is due today. So that's why it's uh, why it turns orange. If the task is overdue, it will turn red. So you always see the most important tasks uh, on one look. Also, um, we have this approval marketing list. As already mentioned, marketing is responsible for approving the, the content. The, the, the pictures and, and the flyer and stuff. So I want Mary to be the owner of this list, which means, as you can see here, I'm, oh, sorry, 
I am able to move tasks to any list back and forth. So there are no rules um, in the background, not like Flowbird. Um, what I can do now is that Mary has the ownership of this list, so only she will be res um, um, she will be able to move tasks out of her list. So let's try that. So I can move this task into her list, but I cannot move it out because Mary has the ownership of this list. And once a task is moved to a list um, with a specific owner, the owner will get a email not uh, an email notification as well, so that a task has been moved to the list. Um, so then she can click on it and check out what the task was. So if I add myself now, you will see that now I can move the task out of that list again. And that's actually another key functionality as already mentioned. So the, the um, clear responsibilities of individual tasks and also whole lists. Good, then here I can, as already mentioned, select a due date for one list, which means if, for example, I want to have, um, I want that every task within the new list um, should be done. This should actually mean to do. Um, within the to-do list should be done by a specific date. I could set the date here. Um, also, um, as I created the workroom and I'm Mary's team lead, I want to know and get a notification once a task is moved to the done list. Good. Um, so far, so good. Um, here, the filter icon. I can filter for tasks um, that were created by a specific person or that were assigned to a specific person. So if I only want a few tasks that were assigned to Mary, I just select Mary. I do not have any tasks, so I don't see my tasks. So this kind of kind of provides a better overview for your tasks. I could also search for tasks. So if I type in logo, then I only see this task with the term in the name. Good, then let's log in as Paul. Paul was just invited to a workroom. It's gonna refresh and here he is. So. Paul has no permission to uh, create a workroom, so that's why he can't even see the create button because Paul is our external photographer, um, so he only has to collaborate but can't create a workroom. Within the My Task area, Paul sees, oh, okay, I have a task. Um, it's in the to-do list. It's in the Flyer by Xama workroom, and it's due today. So he clicks on the task, and the task immediately opens. So Paul, okay, upload photos from shooting. Um, yeah, I can do that. And he will jump to the folder structure. So if you have um, already images or like assets within a folder structure, you can just select them here and add them to a task or upload it directly from your local machine. I want to select those few, uh, those four, because those are the ones that we have pre-selected on Monday. Now the images are being uploaded to the workroom. This takes a little bit because my Wi-Fi is not that great right now, but as you can see, the, the images are being uploaded to the folder structure, and I will then be able to add them to the task directly. Or if I, I choose not to, then I, I don't add them at all. So I see the, the progress bar, everything's done, um, and I wanna select the images now. Um, as already um, mentioned before, the context menu on the folders, that's the same with the images. So if I, um, oops, sorry about that. Um, if I click on 
an image and open the context menu, then the actions will show up that actually make sense for a selected image. In this case, I can only download it, delete it, or upload a new version because I'm in the add mode. So I now want to add all those four images to the task. And um, I will just move the task. I was that quick. I didn't even move it to the doing list, but I moved the task directly to the approval marketing because I need to inform Mary. So Mary now gets an email notification that a task was being moved to her list and then she can check out what happened there. Then let's log in as Mary. Just typing in the email address, marketing password, and now I was logged in to the cloud account and forwarded back to workrooms. As you can see, Mary is part of more workrooms. Well, one of them is closed already, and she also has the permission to create a new workroom. In her task overview, she has two tasks, um, both in the file Bike Summer Workroom. Okay, upload logo is due today. Let's do that right away. So, as I'm the one that has to approve all the content, I just upload the, the logo, um, add it to the task and move the task to done because I don't need another marketing approval because I'm the one that needs to approve anything anyways. Select one image for flyer. Okay, I need to check that out. So move the task to doing. As you can see here, the task was moved to doing and the other one was moved to done already. Now I wanna actually check out the images that the photographer uploaded. I can view the images in the detail view um, as you can see here down in, the, in those controls, I can view the image in original size um, or fit to the available space, zoom in or out, and add markers. We will come to that later on. So let's just view those images. Not that happy about those, but I really like this one. Um, yeah, let's let's choose this image. I actually need another folder, um, rejected. As you can see here in the, in the file tab, if I click on one image, uh, I can download the file, upload a new version, move the file, rename it or delete it. So I can see the actions that I actually make sense for this one file. If I select more, too quick. So if I select more, I can only move the files or delete the files. So let's select the third one and move the files to rejected and this one to selected. Okay, then I am happy actually. I really do like this photo, but I'm not too happy about it. Please crop image to standard size. So we have a standard size for flyers. And um, now I want to assign the task to our designer to crop the one image that I just selected to the standard size that we have um, added to the task. And so that he knows what actually has to be cropped or what needs to be in the focus. I don't want like this on the left side. I can set a marker. So we have uh, in workrooms, we have those this comment and, and marker functions. So I can set a marker, for example, just a pin or a whole area, or I can just freehand uh, uh, draw um, an area, specific area and set a marker. So I want, the image to be cropped like kind of like this. 
um, and mention uh, true. This should be in the focus. Okay. So now, as you can see here, I mentioned true in a comment. So true will get an email notification that he was mentioned in a comment. So he can check it out. Um, and I set a marker as well. So I can um, hide or unhide the marker and true can do the same. So he will know what um, actually needs to be in the focus and what uh, where I set the marker to. Good, so um, I mentioned true, I now need, I already signed it to true and I want it to be done by today again. I'm done with that. So let's sign in as true. Email address, um, designer. Oops. Let's the password okay as you can see true um, also does not have the permission to open a workroom um, he will just open the workroom that he's part of um, he could also see the task within his my task area on the cockpit and now he sees okay please crop standard image, uh, image to standard size. Um, let's view the image. Okay, I already know what she has, so I could view the marker again. And now I wanna upload a new version. So Drew is really quick. He already cropped the image. And now as you can see in the, in the progress bar, um, a new version of this image is being uploaded to the file structure and also add it to the task. So I'm actually done with that. So let's inform Mary to approve, comment and move the task to approval marketing. So I'm done, as you can see, task was moved to approval marketing. Mary got another email notification and now let's log in as Mary again. Type in the email address again. Password was saved. And there we are. Yes. <clears throat> so Mary as well can see her tasks. She sees, okay, select one image for flyer. That's in the doing list. The other one is already done. So let's just, I did not assign it to Mary, but I did move the task to Mary's list and I can see the two tasks here. Uh, crop image to standard size, that was the one that Drew was working on. So let's open that task, let's view the new version. Yes, now I'm happy. I'm really happy about that and let's move the task to done. So we have selected a new version that was done already. Oh yeah, I still need to approve that because that was in my list. Um, yeah, I like the picture, so move it to done. So then my task, uh, select one image for flyer. I'm, I already did that, so I can move it to done right away. And now I create a new task. Um, please create final flyer and assign it to our designer, Drew. This should be done by the end of the month. And I can add the files so I can add the logo and the selected image. So I have both files here and I'm done now. Good, of course, for flyer creation, there are usually many, many more tasks and files um, necessary, but we do not have time for that today. <laughs> um, but with that simple use case, I did show all the functionalities 
and features of workrooms, so everything that you need to know and how you can work with workrooms. So again, we have all the lists. We have this agile um, collaboration where you can move um, tasks to different lists as long as you're not the owner, but you also have the clear and transparent um, ownership and responsibilities as for like simple tasks, but also like for whole lists. Um, I did not mention this icon up here yet. So that's the Sealum Drive icon where you can subscribe with Sealum Drive. So you can, uh, or you will be able to synchronize assets from your local machine to the workroom and the other way around. More on that later on. So as you can see, um, you can use workrooms for any kind of collaboration projects, um, anything that you need or where you need internal, external um, parties to collaborate. Let's view my workrooms again. As you can see here, I have this Flyer Bike Summer and I also have a TNT task board. So we also use a task board within our team um, just to get an overview that, uh, on who is working on what. So new tasks will be added within the new task list, and then either the employees, so me and my colleagues, um, will just grab the tasks or our team lead just um, assigns the tasks to our lists. We do have, um, oh, oh, I did go the other way around. So um, as you can see, I also see the most important tasks right away because they're orange, so everything that's due to do today, everything that's already overdue would be red. And I am able to move tasks in different um, lists, but I'm not able to move tasks from other lists to different states because my colleagues are the owners of those lists. So this is just that we all have an overview on who is working on what. Um, that's actually it from the live demo. So let's jump back to the presentation. Thank you, Johanna. Great insights. Very nice examples. Thank you very you're much. Welcome. You're welcome. I'm I'm not done yet. I still have. Oh, you're not done yet. Ah, sorry. No, I'm sorry. Al almost done. <laughs> almost done. So, but I will be done real quick. So just. Um, Really quickly, um, what are the requirements for workrooms? So uh, here you can see how workroom interacts with uh, the Content Hub, with the Silum app, and with the Silum Cloud account. So as already mentioned, um, in order to use workrooms, you will need to have a Silum Cloud account, which is uh, kind of the glue that connects all Silum services with each other. So why is that? Um, because within the Silum Cloud account, your organization centrally manages and licenses the Silum services, for example, Workroom. Um, and once you connect your own personal user to your organization, you will then be able to use those licensed services. Like you've seen in the live demo, um, my user, Johanna and Mary and all the other users were part of the Silum CPS demo organization. And the Silum CPS demo organization has licensed workrooms and flowboards. So myself as, jo uh, well, as Johanna or Mary, we could use workrooms. Um, I won't go too much into technical detail here, but in order to use Workrooms, you will at, uh, you will need a Content Hub version of at least 1910. Um, you will also need the already um, mentioned registered Silum Cloud accounts, as well as the valid Workrooms license. And of course, you will need the corresponding module, uh, modules and the proper configuration. So um, in general, um, please contact service.silum.com if you would like to set up Workroom. Uh, 
uh, and need help or check out our online documentation for detailed requirements and further information. Also, uh, if you want to try out Workroom, uh, you can sign up for a free Workroom trial. Um, just go to workrooms.net slash en slash sign up and you can just work around, um, open Workrooms and try to collaborate and check out all the awesome functionalities. Uh, last but not least, um, a short outlook of what's planned for Workrooms. Michael um, already covered that. Um, beforehand a little bit. So in the future, there will be extended version and few functionalities um, like switching between versions um, and comparing versions next to each other. Um, for example, with the, the one image that I uploaded, um, with the cropped image that I uploaded, I could switch then between the versions or open the versions right next to each other and compare what, what's changed. Also, a uh, full GDPR compliant offline file synchronization will be possible with Zilum Drive. Um, so that was the icon that I did show you on the upper right corner. So where you can subscribe to Drive and then sync um, assets from your local machine to Workroom and the other way around. Uh, last but not least, um, you will also be able to directly push content to and pull content from uh, your Content Hub with the Extended Content Hub integration. So that means that um, you could start or you will be able to start a workroom with assets um, right from um, your Content Hub and then work within the workroom and add files, um, edit files. And once you're done with the workroom, you can push the files back to the Content Hub. So it's like an import export. Good. Um, that's actually it from my side. Uh, thanks again to our partners. Uh, before I hand over to my wonderful colleague, Christoph, I see that we have not much, but four minutes kind of uh, to answer a few questions. Um, don't be sad if we did not answer, uh, answer your questions or if we don't answer your questions, they will be answered right afterwards. So, Christoph, I can hear you already. Yeah, Johanna, we have Hi. one question. Good morning, by the way, from Mark. If, if Workrooms is a full software as a service offering. Yes, uh, Workrooms is um, full SaaS only, um, but the Content Hub, hub uh, Content Hub can be used as on-prem or SaaS. I see another question. When will that be available? Well, the release is next week um, on April 6th for workrooms, but you can also um, already start the trial as already mentioned. Yeah, there's there's one, one other question. If you need to have a content hub up and running, if, if, if I may answer that one, no. Um, Workrooms is a standalone solution, fully SaaS uh, powered, so to say. You do not need to have a content hub, but uh, there will also be an integration between our customers who already have a content hub and Workrooms. In case any questions come up later on, uh, we will uh, answer them or send the answer out um, a couple of days later. So now, um, thanks for listening. Um, hope you're all well, stay healthy, and now it's time to hand over to my wonderful colleague, Christoph.